I'm failing at your shelf challenge right now, but... Oh, that's... you're shelf challenging. Yay! Um, what else am I supposed to say? <laughs> um, I was a high school librarian for three years, and it's my first year in elementary in a new district. Okay, well, how's it going? Oh, it's overwhelming. I'm also yeah. kind of a gifted teacher, but oh. uh, and I days next week, uh, about last week, so that was interesting. <laughs> Always interesting. Good. Um, well, okay. Good. Good for you. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess I'm next. I'm Beth. Hi, Beth. How are I'm, you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm, yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah. I, uh, I am a ele an elementary librarian, fourth through sixth grade. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, and I am. This is my first year on a completely flexible schedule, which has been awesome. Really been enjoying that. I bet. And I've been a teacher for a really, really, really long time. And I started. What is really weird is I started. I, I I'm not a t Twitter person. Yeah. I I was very much you know people try five years ago people tried to convince me they're like oh you have to do this I'm like. Yeah. yeah, and I tried it for like three days, and I'm like, yeah, I don't get it. I don't care what you're doing. And now, you know, I've been, I'm kind of doing the same thing that Caitlin's doing. I'm not as active as Caitlin is. I'm kind of quiet out there, but um, that's okay. You know, it's okay to be a lurker. We call that lurking. That's what I am. And you're I'm just on watching, and you just follow hashtags and, and receive information through there. That's wonderful. Well, what's weird follow. is just like two days ago, the day before Joyce said you were coming to be at our hangout, I started following you. So I was, oh, uh, I was like, okay, see, I'm following the right people, so I must thank be doing you. something right. So If I don't remember to follow you back, just message uh, me. You and don't be need to follow me, I don't say anything. I'm boring. So. Oh, still. Nice to know, though. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we nice have Mary, you. and I think I may have figured out how to work Camtasia over at Google Hangouts. And so, All right. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Hopefully you'll archive it. That's what I'm trying to do. So this is Mary and Brenda's joining us. So Mary, I'm back and forth. I see Brenda's joining us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Mary, tell Matthew who you are. Okay, I'm Mary. I'm a kindergarten teacher. Yay! Uh, you have the best yeah. grade ever. I do like it. Someone said to me, "Aren't uh, you know? Why do you do this?" I said, "Do you get hugs every day at your job?" Every day. Every day, oh, every and day. I think you're the best. Mm -hmm. And I sing off key, but they tell me I'm a great singer. So oh, yeah. good for my self esteem. They're wonderful. Um, I'm a Twitter lurker and a Good. blog lurker. Good. So um, I'm hoping that through this class, I will be able to bring more technology to my kinders. Yeah. To get them ready for the real world. They're the best. They're the best because, you know, you can't fail with kindergarten. Or you can fail as much as you want. And they just <laughs> love you through it. So they're the best to try that stuff with. Yeah, they have <laughs> short-term memory. So that's oh, yeah, better. They love it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Brenda joined us a couple of minutes ago, and her microphone's muted, so she'll just say hello in the we chat, perhaps, as we little... move forward. So, Hi, Brenda. I'm sorry that you're having troubles, but nice to meet you. So, Matthew, what's hot and new for elementary librarians? What's your best advice? Hot and new for elementary librarians. Um, I think the biggest thing that we're seeing... Uh, is our role in Common Core. That shouldn't be new to you, but um, uh, it's certainly significant. The amount of reference they do to inquiry-based learning is, is immense. Um, and who better to learn that from than the experts? That's the language we've spoken for years, um, and now we're at a pivotal place that we can really uh, be indispensable in our, in our schools as long as we're being vocal about it. So that's where I see kind of as the main the main thing now. I do a, an awful lot of uh, writing work and, and language arts work that directly um, ties in with Common Core. One, because I'm interested in it, but two, because I want to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm in that same playing field as my colleagues. I want to make sure I'm part of that conversation. What was the most effective, fun, wonderful lesson you did this year? Oh, gosh. I'd like to think my best ones are yet to come, but um, <laughs> the best thing I did this year, this is huge, it's still going on, um, so if you see me online talking about um, Earth Pals, um, when I went to ISTE last summer in San Diego, um, a friend and I saw, um, a, through someone's presentation, a, a little photo of something that said, 
TEDx nursery school or some joke like that. I didn't know. Is that real? That's not real, but we thought (laughs) this is TED talks have never been done at the elementary level that we know of. We're doing research. We're looking where you can do that. I know you can do this. This is the research skills that we teach. So um, Sherry Gick from uh, Rossville, Indiana, and I met her through Level Up and things like that. Um, She and I decided we were going to try to do a TEDx style um, project where every component is student centered. They have the research question. They are doing everything. And we're just, um, you know, tucking our hands beneath our armpits and letting them do it and facilitating. Um, And right now we are presenting to one another. Um, We've built uh, infographics through um, Prezi. Um, The kids are working on the presentation skills, but everything they researched, we decided this time to go with the environment. So her kids have never recycled before. Her one class in her third grade, um, one of her third grade classes. Um, So they wanted to look at the impact they could make as a class recycling. And they were looking at all the data of weighing it and what this equals for the big scheme of the school. My school looked at energy conservation. We got volt meters. Um, and we figured out how much uh, in kilowatt hours it's costing our school, and we measured all these different appliances they measured, and we uh, made all these calculations to determine um, how much it actually costs our school to run you know, one computer plugged in but turned off all the time, and then that same computer plugged in and turned on because there's a huge amount of energy difference, but it still expends energy just being plugged into the wall. Uh, anyway, so we learned all these different things, and now they're at the point where we're sharing with not only their classmates and not only, and not um, only um, our uh, companion schools, um, sister schools, as it were, but we're also presenting to uh, my colleagues and to hopefully the world at large. So the idea of taking um, a project, making it ultra student centered, and then showing them. Uh, an authentic learning experience that they can truly impact the world uh, has kind of been a big thing for Sherry and I. It's taken us nearly 10 weeks to get where we are, but it's been the greatest collaboration I've ever done, and it's been between uh, two media specialists and two third grade teachers. So it's just been massive uh, and wonderful. Are you going uh, so, to re- are you going to record and archive the kids' presentations? We absolutely are. Sherry's kids are presenting now, and she's actually. I think tomorrow they're presenting to the staff and they're recording and sharing it. And uh, my kids will be doing that too. We both um, blogged pretty significantly about it um, leading up to this with more of the explanation of how we did all the research. And now our second blogs will each be about the presentation part itself. Um, But to show you images of my third graders making a rough draft infographic on this huge bulletin board paper, like sketching it all out, getting a physical layout of what we want this to look like. It's just just awesome. Um, and ultimately, Joyce, we would love to get to a point doing a project like this where, where all of you, our colleagues, can be making comments to these students so that they can see their work doesn't just affect our school, but it affects teachers working with other students in, uh, you know, all across the world. So we're trying to show them and help them see that what they're doing is so much bigger than just you and me and, and just what we're doing in this class. It has these massive implications. I think that's where we're reaching the, the students now is seeing that the world is so much bigger than you realize. Um, so well, I think role that you play we've in? had this year, um, you know, seeing what Malala accomplished, yeah. And uh, yeah. and the girls in um, in the UK with their campaign against please forgive me female genital mutilation, uh, right. yeah. kids kids have voices and so what we're seeing oh, yeah. in, in maker spaces the notion of audience the notion yeah. that um, kids can be citizen journalists um, there's so much inspiration out there that yeah. why should kids bother to do this this hard work. If there's no end game for them, if there's nobody exactly. to hear it, and so I, I love what you're doing. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you, Matthew. Oh no, thank you. So I, I want my class because they are more elementary specialists than I am 
to ask their questions. And I know, we, let's all say hi to Stacy, who's waiting in the background. We're going to be chatting with her a little bit later about databases. So she's she's going to learn a little bit from us. <laughs> okay. So um, so my my friends in fifty five forty one, um, who has questions of Matthew? I saw that you had all the we stuff, the the math for we. Yeah. And I saw you had the the wiki that had like fourth grade, and there were like two things on there. I'm like, I need more. Right. Um, there, are there other things? Are there other ways to find? Just because I thought that's kind of a, I have some I have some teachers who are really into just playing with the Wii and in, into that type of thing. I thought, oh, that'd be really nice. To, right. To, to drag that in. Well, in in October there'll be a whole book, as I said. Oh. <laughs> Um, and we can't publish that online, so we built this wiki, um, and we'll be pushing it more as we get closer to the book release, uh, because right now there's 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 nothing. When we were doing this stuff in our in our libraries, and, and the person I co-authored it with is a math teacher, um, everywhere we looked online, no one seemed to be using the Wii this way, which... Um, we had a hard time believing, but maybe more importantly, no one was sharing it online. <clears throat> so why make all these different resources if we can't work together? So we started this Wii Instructional Network so that um, when things get, get rolling, uh, your fourth grade teachers, the media specialists, everyone can be writing lessons, <clears throat> putting them onto this um, wiki, this resource of, of lessons way, way more than what we'll be able to offer in the book. We wrote lessons for K through seven, um, six lessons each, six lessons seeds um, for each grade. Um, and some of the ideas that we had that didn't make it into the book went on to the, the wiki. Uh, and we're hoping to be able to add more soon. Um, but no, for now, we have an awful lot of people that have permissions on the wiki. Uh, it's just getting to a point where we can uh, really sit down and promote it and encourage other people to add their own ideas and be a part of that conversation. We're really trying to make uh, other people a part of the same conversation. So what, thank you for being interested. Beth, Beth wants to know what the title is. Uh, the title is Teach Math with the We, and then there's some subtitle with it. Uh, but Matthew Winner and Megan Hearn is the co-author. And if you make it to ISTE this year in San Antonio, they'll have a uh, heavy promotion and Cali's of it. And I think next month there's a uh, an email from the ISTE bookstore that will have the uh, cover in it and a little blurb. So, yeah, watch for that. You must be very excited. So excited. We'll have I, to have um, a party. What an incredible amount of work. Yeah, totally. What an incredible <laughs> amount of work. But it's so cool to have something like that, um, a passion project like that, uh, come out of the world. It's very, very cool. Very cool. Great. So, um, any other questions of Matthew? Uh, Caitlin, no? <laughs> You're just stretching. I'm thinking, sorry, I'm stretching. It's, I've hit the point in the school year where my mind has kind of like put a wall and become a pudding. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what, Matthew, everybody has problems, like budget problems and right. uh, scheduling problems and motivating teachers to work with them problems. Do you have any tricks? Um, how do you solve your I, problems? How do I solve my problems? Um, the thing I always talk about with collaboration, and I think this is something that probably isn't new information for all of you, is that... Um, I always make it a goal to start small in collaboration. So this year is my last year at my elementary school at Longfellow because I've been um, invited, hired, to open our brand new elementary school. So I'm excited to do that. Um, but what that will also mean is restarting with all these staff that I don't know. Um, and when you start for collaboration, I think the best tip is to start really small and know that small is enough. If you're collaborating with one teacher on one project per quarter your first year, that's enough. It doesn't have to be more than that um, because really you need to establish your, your, your footing and you have to, um, I don't know, you have to, hold on a second, I'm getting a nod. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a nod because my son can hear me because my voice is uh -oh. traveling to the wall, so I'm going to walk with you. Okay. Um, You'll be really quiet. 
Hey, hey, Jonah, I love you, buddy. Here, yeah, Jonah, I'm talking to you. Want to say hi to Joy? Want to say night to yeah, Joyce? Yeah, gosh, I'd love to say hi to Jonah. Hi, Jonah. Where are you, buddy? Jonah, hi, honey. Good night, Joyce. Hi, sweetheart. It's good to see you. Who's, who's, who's on your pajamas, sweetheart? Who's that? Is that a, is that a race car? Oh, great. Okay, wow. I bet you're really fast. Okay, blow Joyce a kiss. Say no, no. Mm, good night, Aww. sweetie. I hope to see you. Bye bye, Jonah. <laughs> good night, Jonah. Um, that's my two and a half year old. Yeah. And and uh, Matthew, I'm you. noticing there's there's a qu other questions people may be shy to ask, but or their mics might be giving them issues. But there's some things in the chat too. And Loren. Oh, 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 oh you're right. Yeah. Um, so Loren, I, we, we'll finish your question. What I, I I get distracted. So. Yeah. So the collaboration. Um, the how do you work with the other people? It's it's um start small and um and um. And share what you're doing with other people. If you find someone that um, you really get along with, someone that uh, you think, oh, this second grade teacher is really kind, or better yet, where's that kindergarten teacher? Work with kindergarten. They are always flexible with their curriculum and uh, willing to work with you. Um, you just look at their curriculum and say, you know, I see that in kindergarten you have this animals in winter unit coming up. Well, I already have this idea, and I was wondering if maybe we can uh, work something out together. Um, with collaboration, you always want to, um, of course, affirm and acknowledge what the other person brings to the table, but also know that you bring something unique t too. Uh, and you want to make sure that it doesn't, you know, detract from what they're doing in the classroom. Despite your best intentions, the classroom teachers have so many pressures on them now. Um, and it's really important to kind of honor that. So, I don't know, with collaboration, I start small, and uh, after establishing relationships with my staff, we just now, I have just a lot of plates spinning, uh, and a lot of things that have almost become tradition. You can say, uh, remember the Animals in Winter project we did last year? Yeah, I really like that, too. Why don't we do it again this year? And I thought of these couple tweaks we could do to make it maybe even better. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really, it's just building from a, a small star. Cool, cool. So we need a fifth grade trick for Lorraine. What are you doing with fifth grade and research? Anything. Uh -huh. Anything at all that they want to research, you can research. Um, right now, we're finishing a, a, a career research thing. Uh, we've got this um, applied research laboratory, they call it. Um, it's like a career and technology place that kids can go to in high school. Uh, I'm sure you have it. It's... Um, where they can go learn to do business things and cooking things and restaurant management things and things like that. Um, but to start the conversation with fifth graders and have them be aware that this is an option in the future, um, we do a career research thing. And I've developed this whole writing lesson with JobBot. JobBot 3000 is going to randomly assign you a job. And really it's 30 jobs that I've selected that are in the field of STEM Oh, kiss. Bye. I love you. <laughs> um, these are 30 jobs that are in STEM fields, high need fields also, um, that I don't think the kids are aware of, and I want them to be aware. And we use this website called Career Zone through uh, New York. Um, and New York and Pennsylvania and Maryland all have very uh, comparable salaries and job needs. And so that's I feel justified to use that. Um, and essentially, they research this job that they're assigned, and then they write an opinion article to JobBot. They write a speech to JobBot that they give, but they write it out first, saying why it's a good job for them or why it's a horrible job for them. And it might be, dear JobBot, um, this job requires a lot of um, analysis of data, and I am not good at math and I'm not interested in math, so I don't think this would be a good job for me. Or on the other hand, um, maybe I'm not so good at math now, but I'm really interested in this job, so I'm willing to work to make that job work out. And that conversation of what skills do you need, what skills do you need to hone to be able to have this option in the future is, um, I think, a really important result from that research that they're doing. So that's one of the things I'm doing with fifth grade. I hope that helps and is something that's useful to you. Um, you know what I love about that? that? I job bot, job B O T. It's a robot. I'm gonna. I made a video on Go Animate. I'm gonna post the link in the 
chat as soon as I find it. Hold on. But go ahead. Keep talking. Yeah, you know what I love about that? I love that um, they're, they're really responding. There's a metacognitive cognitive level there. You know, we've been making kids do research for a long time, and and they're looking, yeah. they're, they're writing transition paragraphs, uh, transition sentences, they're plopping quotes into paragraphs, they're coming up with other transition paragraphs, but they're, what, what we're losing there is is this the stuff that is them and um, and and that yeah. project makes sure that the voice of the student is heard as well as whatever they discovered in research and I, I love that yeah I want to really make sure that okay, every research thing or whatever that we do I'm working really hard to make sure that it's relevant to these kids uh, and doesn't just feel frivolous doesn't just feel like research for the case or for the sake of research okay here's the link um, I'm gonna call it uh, job bot video. So you made that? There it is. I made that on GoAnimate, our, our favorite yeah. free animation tool. Uh, I should really say Gwyneth's favorite. Right. It's not <laughs> It's tool. not that free, Matthew. I don't know. Gwyneth gets well, some special deals sometimes, too. Gwyneth gets special deals. I, I still use what's free and yeah. think that it's fine. But um, anyway, um, that is the video. That video I use as an introduction mm -hmm. to the unit. And then um, the students are randomly assigned through a website called Fruit Machine. Which oh, I love Fruit it. Machine. Yeah, I'll say, that's I classroom. Just, just, that's classroom tools, guys. It's it's got exactly. all these random pickers and um, great noises, and you can embed all their stuff yeah. on your wikis and blogs and stuff. So, so I just plug our jobs into that, mm -hmm. and I say that's the job that Jobbot has assigned you, and that's what they stick with for three weeks. Uh, and right now they're in the process of they've got all their research. And now they're going to write their opinion uh, essays, as it were, their speeches, and they will deliver it as a speech. Um, yeah, so that's been so really, again, it's not really for teachers' eyes thing. only. Right. Right. Cool. Right. So I want to be I want to be sensitive that we have Stacy hanging out too, um, oh, yeah. but I want to make sure I I love that you're here. And uh, so ah. I, <laughs> I, I, what other questions do we have of Matthew? Because he's so generous to be with us tonight. This is wonderful. Thanks. Who else has a question? If not, but I love that idea, and I think I might I borrow it. I would love for you to borrow it. You hear me? This is a class that has um, lots of potential sorry, collaborators I don't too. Feedback. So I'm not sure. If I... No, I hear you. I think it's good. Your microphone's going in and out a little bit, but it's good. Um, my fifth graders haven't done like any research this year. I'm finally getting to see them a little bit more. I've got what I don't even know. Not too many lessons left with them. Uh, I've, they've looked at the library catalog, public library catalog, so they have some idea of starter research. What would you start with if you have kids in fifth grade that you are nervous they're going to fifth grade? They have no idea what a database really is. Anything? What would you? What would be your ultimate start for a few lessons? Um. Well, I'm all about like fully integrating whatever you're doing with them. So um, find something relevant to them and to their needs. Uh, fifth, so they're going into fifth grade or finishing fifth grade? They're, going, they're finishing fifth grade. Finishing. So I would say um, you could put a spin on it and just say, uh, what do you think is the most important thing for my upcoming fifth graders to know? And we can turn that into some sort of a research project because we can be researching. Um, uh, I think, you know, they've gone through a fifth grade year, so maybe the most important thing for them to know as a fifth grader is, um, I don't know, the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Some of our fifth graders do this whole congressional hearing. Um, so they do this whole thing with, um, with that process. So maybe I would end the year with having them do something that feels significant to that. Or, no, why not even do that? Why not just make it something really simple and say, um, you know, research, do, do research that's interesting. Do research like, okay, you're going to make a dream vacation anywhere in the world, and we can tag all these on Google Maps and make like a virtual field trip. But um, do research about those places. See, um, have kids make proposed budgets for where you want to go. How much does it cost? These are all... This is all data that's really easy to get a hold of. How much do flights cost? Um, what are the places you'd like to go see there? Um, and just have them make little little things about what they could do over the summer. If they had, you know, they could take a dream vacation anywhere. Um, something like that is relevant to their interests, but also accomplishes an awful lot of um, library standards with research and using information ethically. 
Um, doing things like that, I always think, is the most important thing. Whatever they can apply to um, life outside of the library, or better yet, life outside of school, I always think is... is kind of, kind of, what's that? And you would just kind of point them like, okay, I want you to use these resources today. I want you to use these resources today. So it's just kind of point them to... No, I would do... Hey, are you familiar with the big six? Yes. Okay, two friends of mine but just I kind of want them to... You kind of want them to what? I kind of want them to make sure that they've seen a database and use Sweet Search and some other resources. Absolutely. So here's the way you talk to fifth graders or any elementary school kid. This is the greatest way. So in the okay. big six... Um, our step number one is test definition. So we're going to say, what's our problem? If we stick with this same idea that whatever, the, the, the vacation, then we're going to say, well, the problem is that I, I want to go somewhere cool, but I, I need to know the information. Um, you can, as a teacher, provide your kids with as much or as little as you want. You could say, you know, you could say, I went to the travel agency or I Googled this list of top places to go in the world, and here's a list of 20 places why don't you just by looking at that name alone, choose one of these and um, and find information on it. But when you're talking about the databases, I would say with them, as I do with using the big six, I say um, what resources are available to us. And we brainstorm all the resources together and then we narrow it down. Or I say because of the sake of time or because of um, – me looking at resources too, I found that this database has a lot of really great information. So kids today, this is the database we're going to use. It's always trying to uh, explain your thought process to the students, be really transparent about that, because we want those kids to grow up and be able to make those decisions themselves. We want them to be able to look at all this. I mean, they're living in an information-rich world, as we all are. You need to be able to look at all this information and say, this website, this is the best one to meet my need. Um, so depending on your time restrictions, you could come up with three websites and make sure one is the one you want to use. Make sure one is horrible um, and make sure one is, you know, maybe one that they could use that you're not your biggest fan, but it still works. And have them look at them and evaluate what resources is, what resource is best for our information need. And then let's use that resource. I would have them involved as much as possible in a decision, even if ultimately you want them to use World Book or Culture Grams or whatever. Lead them to that decision. Lead them to why that's the right tool to use, rather than just telling them this is the tool we're going to use. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Cool. All right, now I know I have, I have Matthew. Stacy, Stacy's here too, and she's going to be joining us. Um, Stacy, I'm sorry if I'm taking up all your time. No, no, I'm, I'm so. You know what? It, we had. I'd asked Stacy and you, um, and I was, I was. It was our database week last week, and I didn't hear back. But I wanted to have you for sure. Uh, and so I was delighted when you said yes, and then I then Stacy said yes right after, and I, I it's like having two dates for the prom. It's really great, <laughs> but it, you know you worry about something like that. So Stacy, you could just I, I, we're talking about databases and resources. Um, what do you, I, and, and Matthew, I want you to feel comfortable going back to your family whenever you want to. But we love having you here. <laughs> any final questions or thoughts for, for Matthew or anything you want to add, Matthew? I'll be here. Okay. Oh, good. I'm so glad you can hang out. No problem. I'll stay. Yeah. All right. So, Stacy, um, you are um, – thank you, Matthew. I'm, this is so gracious. And I'm getting echo. Are you hearing my echo? I was wondering if that's – yeah, it's not, it's not me. I have headphones on, but I'm hearing it too. Yeah. Maybe if everybody Maybe can if everybody mute when they're not talking. They're not talking. Oh, Stacy's getting headphones on too. Just in case. You sound good. And I think I sound okay now. So, Stacy, tell us about you work for Gale Cengage, and I know you know you know all those Gale Cengage databases inside and out. And um, you may have missed earlier that this is a largely elementary group. Uh, is there anybody here who's not an elementary librarian? Yeah, I'm, Jackie's not. I'm middle school. Okay, Jackie's middle school. And I think that probably people wonder um, what databases can do for them. 
Um, we, we're, we worried about our budgets. Um, we're worried about how to use, use these resources creatively, how to justify them. Um, as you were listening to Matthew's talk about research and, and some of the questions, what were your, your, your thought, thoughts? And my New York is coming out. It sometimes hides and then it pops out again. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> uh, but um, what are you thinking as you listen to us talk, Stacy? And tell us who you are a little bit, too. Oh, sure. I, do I sound okay? Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, sorry. I'm in a hotel. Um, I'm traveling. I'm, uh, I'm a trainer for Gail, uh, so I'm not involved uh, really in sales at all. I come in after and show folks how to use all of our resources. Uh, I'm also a librarian. I have my MLS from the University of Buffalo um, and have worked for Gail for, I think, 14 years next month. So I've been around with our resources for a while. And overall for elementary, um, database-wise, we have one specific resource uh, called Kids Info Bits, which is reference books, uh, magazines, uh, USA Today for, the, for some newspaper coverage and, and images. Um, and then the Gale, of course, is a big publisher. Uh, but we Kevin had a, a very big line for elementary uh, books. So what we've done is partner with some other providers to provide ebooks for elementary, uh, like DK titles uh, and uh, things like that to provide them in our, our Gale virtual reference library. So we find that's actually right now for us where um, we're finding more elementary school use for our resources is, is with the ebooks. Um, is everybody from, is kind of scattered or are you all in Pennsylvania? No, uh, we have folks in New York uh, and Maryland and um, I, a lot of Pennsylvania. And I said, looking around the room, where else is anybody from here? New Jersey. I'm sorry? Uh, uh, I teach in New Jersey. Oh, okay. That's right. I forgot. And um, and I'm a SUNY girl too. Just wanted you to know. Oh, excellent. SUNY Bingham. SUNY. Bingham <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, I was going to say there are several, um, Gail has several statewide consortia. So if you, you live in a state, you might actually have uh, access to kids info bids. Yeah. And we uh, had, um, Carl, Carl, at, I know that some, some folks do, I don't think we do in Pennsylvania, uh, but ga uh, Carl, no. Carl gave us a, a trial. So for the course, well, we, we just started a trial oh, a couple okay. of weeks ago. So folks are just beginning to play with it if they haven't yet seen it. Okay. Okay. So, um, sure. And I apologize. I just found out about the Google Hangout yesterday morning. So I. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so happy to have you here. I'm but gonna have to scold Carl. <laughs> don't don't feel bad about um you know uh, uh, this. We didn't need you to prepare anything or anything. We, we we're just great. And we're happy that you're here. Um, I'm has, appalled. You're, you're appalled. I'm appalled. <laughs> really. Well, uh, Stacy, um, I'm not appalled, but <laughs> Matthew, you have any questions for Stacy? Um, Stacy, um, what? Tell me what, Gail, what, are, what my... are some of your top um, databases? What? How do I know you? I know that I know you. How do I know you? We're um, in context, so like opposing viewpoints in context is probably opposing one of viewpoints. our most yeah. popular. I love that database. Yeah. My kids dream about opposing viewpoints in context, and they talk about oh. it like it's a rock star. <laughs> I'm going that's, to get some awesome. more juice, but I'll be, I, I'm, I'm listening closely. Second yeah, is that's been Literature Resource popular. Center. We're in love oh, with sorry? Literature Resource Center. That's another big one for us. We've always been a big literature publisher. So they've actually, um, that one's been around for a long time. And then recently, with because of licensing restrictions, which even if it's content we've published, we have to work with authors on. Um, there was content that was always missing in Literature Resource Center. Uh, so what they did was go back and created a digital archive of several of our literature criticism series. And be, the way we did it was we scanned all of the books. So that alleviated some of the licensing issues. Oh, okay. uh, so now you can kind of go back and get all the volumes of short story criticism and things like that, where coverage in Literature Resource Center might be a little more spotty. We need to talk about um, that, though. 
I have an issue, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bore the elementary librarians with my um, literature criticism issues. So. <laughs> uh, well, and kind of popping back to opposing viewpoints in context, um, one of the things we've heard over the years is folks would like to see a version of that for younger users, um, for a, a lower reading level, because it's it probably um, goes down to about middle school, um, and then. As you look into elementary, it, it might be a bit of a stretch uh, reading level wise, but that's really been one of the most popular resources uh, and, and everybody loves it. That's always the other fun thing is it's fun to train on because people are usually thrilled uh, mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. Nice. What would you like to see? Would you guys like to see a version of that for uh, elementary? Absolutely. Yes. What else, what else is missing? Let's give, let's give um, Stacy some feedback. What is what do you not have that you wish the database people would give you? State specific databases. So we always have. Yeah, I'm, I know PA has PA history in fourth grade. I'm sure other states have that same thing. Oh, state. That's a great recommendation. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's wonderful. You don't think culture grams does it? No, it definitely does not. Not with history at all. No. And, I, and I'm fourth through sixth grade, so the things that a lot of the things that Gail offers, you know, it's my age group is a weird age group. That some of the things are too babyish for my sixth graders, and or they're too hard because they're written at a high school level. So that it, it's a hard that is a that upper elementary age range is is hard to find uh, databases that are really going to be appropriate. Um, Facts on File had all of those state ebooks. I can't remember the publisher, uh, but they they had the ebooks in their Facts on File databases for that age. I don't know if it's still there, but it was part of the Access PA system, and it was really popular. I think we might have lost that in the last cut. Yeah, I don't think we have that now. Mm -hmm. Stacy, what do you think about that idea? Can you do it tomorrow? I like it. Of course. <laughs> of course. Let me make a few calls. <laughs> Let's reach out to Michael Hansen, our CEO. It'll just like that. Um, no, I, I actually um, have heard something similar to that uh, before. And what I was also going to check just and see, we work with lots of uh, partners with our ebooks. I was going to see if Facts on File, if you, in case you don't have access to it, um, I wanted to see if they were one of ones and see if those might be available in our ebook platform. But um, mm -hmm. oh, there's we do work with Facts on File, but there's over 300 books, so I can't discern if they're there or not. But um, you know, I think that's an interesting uh, piece of feedback for our K-12 team. Uh, we've heard uh, research for elementary uh, as well for history. Uh, that's been kind of a popular topic. Folks are looking, say, for ebook content or, or just deeper coverage in kids' info bids. So um, that's something I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, we've heard before. So it's always good to. That's the other thing. Any any vendors you work with, when there are things you want, you want to tell them as often as possible. Because at least at Gale, the more we hear something, the more likely we are to be able to get resources to put towards developing something. So it's it's good to hear that there's only a certain amount of kind of development money around, and we, you know, or well, we I should say, but the product managers all have to kind of share it, and uh, getting dedicated money for things like that is is tough. So um, the more you hear those, the more we hear those things, the more likely there is to uh, meet some steering of the money that way. Um, what else would you guys like to see in your databases? Hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I have to say that over the course of all these years I've been a librarian, um, I, what I know is that the vendors do listen. Um, and any time I've, I've said, um, I've talked about improvements in the, in the search interface or content that was needed, people really did listen. And, uh, and over the years, I've seen the changes that, my, my, that I've, I and my, my colleagues have suggested really be implemented into the, uh, into the, to the platforms. And, so, and I also have to say that of 
of the many databases, I think Gail is the prettiest. So uh, <laughs> it's attractive. Yeah, it's attractive. The kids, the kids are engaged in it. I was really, I, it, it was a tough time for me. I mean, I, I, I think that you'll see I have really no life when I start talking about databases like they're my friends. But, um, <laughs> but I was crushed when you went to the in context uh, uh, layout because my kids don't. I am still. I have to be completely honest with you. I'm still crushed. And I'll tell you why. Well, you want to know why? Can you guess why? Yeah. Oh, the, really? No tabs. Yeah. And 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 honestly, the they don't find the more. So they think that whatever is on that front page is all that there is. And so well, I, I know there's no excuse for that. They should look, but they don't. You know that's interesting because I was working with some public librarians yesterday uh, on Long Island and. They didn't like the homepage of the In Context resources either because they felt like it was overwhelming for kids. There's too much on it. And that the search bar, it's up at the top of the page, it's off to the right, it's kind of a light gray. Yeah. The font's almost faint. And one of their suggestions was to actually make a really simple homepage, just basically a search box. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of text to talk about what you're using or some visuals or something. And I thought it'd be a neat idea if we had kind of a configurable option where if you want the home page that's got all the topics, you could have that um, or a simplified version. So right. that's some feedback I'm going to be putting in my, in my market feedback report uh, as well. I know the eventual hope foreign context and I'm not sure where we're at with it but was to make those topics on the front page configurable by the library so if, um, like we change them up all of March um, most of the well definitely biography I'm not sure about the other in context but it was all women on the front page so we mm -hmm. kind of go in and do that as the topics change but we want to give that control over to the librarian so they can you know if you know you've got a project on climate mm -hmm. change you can make sure that's on the front page Right, and, but and I speaking, don't know when speaking that's of those themes, what's wonderful? I love what Gail gives away during these these special months, and and actually they're they're still they're always there, right? The 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 women the there's a limited number of women by uh, African American biography, women's biography, um, yeah, I, National Poetry Month, right. So there's if you have no money and you're doing you, you don't need a huge scope like my high school students do. The, the, the material that Gail gives away for free is linkable and, and, and actually really pretty wonderful. And the other thing that you guys have done that I wish everybody else would do would, was is to come up with a really useful app. And so um, the Access My Library apps are so fabulous. I, 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 we had that in our module um, last week. Did anybody download them? Yay, Beth. <laughs> All right, you really need, if you, if you have these things, um, even if you don't have any Gale products in your own library, you have access to your public library's Gale products. And so you, if your kids, and I know your kindergartners probably don't have a phone, Mary, a smartphone, but some of your kids might have phones and some of your teachers do too, and it would be cool for them to recognize that they've got access to their public library's uh, resources from Gale and they can carry them around with them even when they're taking their kids to soccer practice and, and send email themselves articles. Um, you know, I think that, I, I've said this before, like our kids are carrying around powerful computers with nothing on them. And so it, it's just ridiculous that they don't have our own library apps and, and the apps for the databases that we pay for um, in the places where they live and play and work. And so um, so I, I really applaud Gail for really coming up with an attractive, usable, easy to find and download app. And I wish the others would. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, we're we're still working on it. We have an app developer, so we hope to kind of take him further. I'd love um, to chat with him. Okay, I'll see if I can I can put you two in touch. Um, okay. If you want to email me, I can sure we'll introduce do. you electronically. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the other thing I was going to mention is this, the K-12 app for, for schools, you have to kind of have access to Gale resources through right. your school. But the public library app, you just have to be near a public library. You don't need a library card or anything. You log in, does that geolocation thing, and 
it's shows a, you it's libraries a beautiful you thing. immediately get access. So right. And so in my, in my neighborhood, right. And what's really wonderful in my neighborhood, I have the tiniest public library near my school, but they don't have to choose that public library. They can choose the larger regional library and access and access those resources. Get all their content. That's great. And guess what else, friends? Access my library, the red version, is your university library. Yes. Oh, right. And so you can carry Mansfield around with you in your pocket. So the blue one is public, the green one is your school, and the red one is your university. And what's cool, too, is all, almost all the databases um, from Gale have a download button for every article, and the ebooks always have a PDF version. And when you open those up on an iPad, and I'm assuming I don't have a Droid device, but I'm assuming there's probably a similar um, feature. You can it open up. You can choose to open it in iBooks or like any note taking app or anything. And then from there, you've got it available to you offline anytime. And you know, of course, you can take advantage of whatever that app offers you too. I use Notability, so I can highlight and make notes and things on it. So the ebooks I love to use, you know, on a tablet. Mm -hmm. um, and so of course, right through the app, you get, you get all access to uh, all those things that you need. So are the, the younger ebooks available, like are the UXL ebooks available through um, the app? Yes, yeah. Any ebooks that you've purchased will be available. Right. So there's kind of going back to when we first started working with third party publisher, there might be a few gaps in PDF coverage, um, but we're closing those. Oh, okay. So, oh, and you can absolutely, I've just seen a question in the chat, you can absolutely link to the free stuff on your websites. We have a Gale Literary Index that basically indexes all of our literature print series. Um, so you can kind of pull the, the print ones off the shelf if, if you have them. Oh, we can? Um, and then, oh, wait, okay, yeah. that's that's where we've got it's issues. Just an index. You, you and I, we need to talk. Well, I yeah, I know okay. the... the <laughs> The in, I, we love the index. I used it all day today, actually, on our poetry project. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. It's CLC that we've got business about. The uh, okay. <laughs> uh, yes, CLC are uh, the online select. version. Select. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, uh, so let's see. Anybody? I, I've been hogging the the, the conversation here. Um, Jackie has a question in the in the chat. Do you see it? Common Core, yeah, is definitely on our radar. Um, one of the things we've done with most of the In Context products is include state standards and then some national ones as well. Uh, we've put the Common Core standards into student resources and context, but they don't, the links that we have don't really do what I think people want them to do. Um, what it does will let you issue basically a search on reading skills or writing skills and it's not really what folks want they kind of want lesson plans that line up and we actually have some of those uh, some lesson plans on our website I'm not sure how many line up with Common Core because it's been an ongoing project over the years so the newer ones might um, but it's a project we're definitely aware of on the training team and one of the things we're trying to do is when we have workshops about the Common Core. We're trying to get permission from what gets created in those workshops so we can post lesson plans. Um, and I actually have some I can share with you uh, if you're interested. Uh, the, I, again, um, maybe not quite as many for elementary. Um, that's kind of an area where we're dipping our toe into. We've been working a little more on it in high school and middle school levels. But I went to a very inspiring um, conference this past Friday, the Blue Ribbon Conference um, in Reading, Massachusetts, and got to see what actually a, a librarian was doing with third graders in our databases. They were actually using, you know, one of our more kind of grown-up products, all our periodical content, Power Search, where you press search all the periodicals and things. Mm -hmm. Within those thousands of magazines that are in there, you've got all the kids' stuff. So you know, Kids Discover and Ranger Rick and that type of thing. So she was doing really targeted tools there. She wasn't having the kids log in and search. She would find, you know, an article she wanted them to use from Ranger Rick and give them a link to it and then develop all this other stuff. So even though they weren't um, 
uh, kind of actively going in and doing their own research, they were still getting content that was useful. And, and of course, met the common core because that's what, you know, basically all the databases are helping to do. So, so what, it was if, really what if you developed a wizard within the database and, and we were able to modularly grab um, the Duralinks and they actually showed up attractively and um, we were able to like pull into um, say um, there would be one module with learning uh, objectives and we grab those objectives from the right band of common core we just grab them and drag them in and what if we you know we, we, we grabbed all the pieces that are required in a lesson in addition to the resources so we could mash them up together and have them really handy from that that would be and and and, and and basically, like in, um, oh gosh, in Turnitin, we've got all these, um, we've got a, a bank of comments that we pull together. Um, we certainly put our own comments in as well, but um, we can mash up a lesson with the resources, put our own personal touch in. Um, and there's so, many, there's so much stuff in there. Um, and then we can actually uh, publish it and send it out to teachers. Um, I don't know if that's possible. I know you have limited development funds, but I think that would really be something Gail could do in a, in a very cool way. Yeah. Does this make any sense? I think so. I, I think they're, that they want kind of tools like that. And I think that's what people are expecting if we're going to link Common Core standards in our databases. They expect it to help them in some way, not just be kind of a repetition of what the standards are. Right. You want so, to, the thing is you want to take the stuff yeah, outside ideas. of the search interface. Yeah. The search interface doesn't do me any good and, and the teachers are not yeah. interested in that. And if they can build instruction and and they can build assessments. So if if you know if you use all those rubrics that people are creating for the common core, get permission to put them in there, pull out um, pull out the pie the pieces of assessment that match the learning objectives and then pull together a full lesson within your interface that can be published outside of it, I'd love to be able to do that. Yeah. I think that's we're kind of headed down that path definitely on the textbook side of things. Gail is part of Cengage Learning, mm -hmm. so they are a big, of course, textbook publisher. I don't know... Um, it, it's going to work mainly with ebook textbooks, right? So, um, so here's so what you do. Quite. So we create a Gale iBook, right? Yeah. But we don't. We, that's trademarked, I'm sure. But we create a Gale iBook interface so that we're grabbing content. We're create. We're we're me, remixing our textbooks out of this fabulous Gale content, and and so we're getting these personalized textbooks. And 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 teachers are less excited about databases than they are about a textbook in my discipline for my my grade and and librarians um, what you would you know what I love is are the tools to really easily do this for every teacher I love mm -hmm. and I can you know yeah. right right now I'm taking this into libguides I'm taking it into wikis I'm taking it into Google sites I'm creating all sorts of different types of books I mean I'd love to be able to do it within within a, a group of products that I love within your yeah. Your your kind your federated search. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm again. I'm monopolizing the conversation. So, no, but that's actually kind of our plans as well. They're doing that right now. That type of thing, not on the Gale side of things again, but but on Cengage Learning, uh, they've developed a tool called MindTap, um, which can you, can you it, say it's also going to have an app, and we'll do something like that as well. You, you can basically build your own units built around. Say articles you're pulling from the databases or ebook chapters or whatever it may be, uh, and build and and in this case since it's mainly for the instructor right now they can build their own assessments. I don't know too much about it. There might be assessments built in as well, but I think that idea has to trickle down, you know, throughout the rest of the company and have tools like that within um, on the Gale side of things as well. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah. and let me, I'm going to go find the link for the lesson plans that we have. Um, yeah, I, I, you well, know, the other so. thing that is, is really powerful outside in terms of um, uh, tools are the notion of how to build learning playlists. And if you create something like EduCanvas or a MentorMob or, or something for within the Gale, um, the Gale um, platform or interface, 
Um, that would be really cool too. ProQuest had something like that, but I don't think it was attractive or easy to use. Um, but imagine if you created a little kind of movie film interface template, and then I dragged in all of those Dura links, and and then boom, 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 my my English class had everything they needed on Emily Dickinson in a playlist format that can be embedded and flipped. Super cool. So, um, okay, I'm going to be quiet now. What other database questions do we have? Oh, we so we've got some free lesson plans. Thank you, Stacy. Sure. I have some others that we've developed. They aren't available online at all. So let me put my email address in here. You guys can email me if you'd like any of those. And they do. The ones that um, my teammate Julie Prepare and I have created do have the Common Core standards. Okay, so let's let's get a few. Um, we usually close up around nine, so I want to make sure we get all the questions in before that. So, who else has database questions or questions of Matthew, who's still listening patiently? Oh my. This is such a quiet and polite class. So what what do you what do you see of the future? If, if just until somebody where where are you going? When, and like in five years, what will we love about databases? Or what will we love about Gail? Oh Can you give us any intelligence? I <laughs> I uh, I wish I could I wish I could. Um, I do think we're developing we're moving towards kind of a uh, you build it yourself type model. Uh, the ebooks have been really successful in that way. Um, so I kind of see us developing that path where you're not just creating a collection, kind of an ebook shelf, but you're building your own database to, to spit your specific needs. We have some tools that kind of do that now, where you can create a custom journal database or a custom, you know, ebook collection, but it's cumbersome. Um, so I see that kind of streamlining and getting more configurable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Can feel. Can anyone hear me? Yes. My computer's gonna crash again. Can someone copy these links somewhere where I can find them later, please? <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't you have don't any good questions? <laughs> you have to ask. You know what? I cannot do it because I'm I'm recording. So. Um, I no longer have control of, of that text, so. I, I have, so I've been copying the links into Evernote, so I can okay. put them into something nice looking and get them can back. Can you put them in the forum for us? Yeah, I can do that. That would be wonderful, Beth. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have, I guess just comments because, and I, I hate to admit this, but I don't have the love of databases that Joyce has, at least in this moment in my career, because um, I, I, you know, I've, I'm, and I, I haven't been in using them a lot lately because um, I switched to this school, Power Library, you know, our, our database collection from Pennsylvania went out the window, elementary libraries, you, we, again, you, you've heard this, but we just don't have the budget to purchase high quality databases. And, you know, this week I've been teaching databases to the students, and to be honest with you, I mean, I had a girl, and, and I'll tell you, it was not a Gale database, but there was a girl who was doing a search, um, and it was the history of soccer. And, you know, the, the top of her list, there's nothing that talks about the history of soccer. The first thing is not even an article about soccer. So I'm trying to teach these students, yeah, you should use this because this is so easy to use, and it's not for them. So that's a little bit of a source of frustration I'm you know I'm trying to get them and, and I honestly my students actually said to me like hey look if we're gonna learn about this in high school why are we learning about this now <laughs> and I didn't have a good answer for that except to say well you know by high school they expect you to know how to do this so I, and I don't know what the solution is it's just it's a concern that I have that and, and I guess that goes back to there not being something that is just right for our age kids when they're just learning how to use these things that's that's simple and concise and, you know, at their level and has the, the clear multimedia. I mean, uh, we a lot of people have been going on and on about Titanica. And, and to be honest with you, I don't, I'm not crazy about that interface either. I haven't found the thing that I like. So it's, it's just a comment, I guess. But I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated with trying to teach that without having something that's fabulous to hand them. 
don't know. Just my two cents. I mean, I'm not. I guess I can't expect you to respond. There's not really a question there. I have to tell you that, you know, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, there are some areas of knowledge where the databases just don't make any sense at all. Like if I were looking at the history of soccer, I would absolutely start at Wikipedia. Uh, that's where I'd go first. And, and then I would kind of look at the various different leads that Wikipedia gave me, and I, I, I'd try to figure that out. I'd probably go to whatever soccer, National Soccer Association there was, or National Football Association there was, or international stuff. But that makes sense to me. Um, there might be an article, I, I probably would look at SIRS because somehow the history of soccer stuff seems to show up in SIRS, that kind of thing. But, yeah, and actually SIRS was what I was using, and that was the one that was like, nothing came up. Nothing there. came up. So then the thing, the thing is, when I'm looking for an argument on a controversial subject, opposing viewpoint rocks for me. Right. And, 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 and it's, I can understand it's an, that. It's an I, easy sell. I have these teachers who are like, we want to we want to teach the kids database but nothing does everything and that's the whole thing and right. as your kids come up with different topics and they're all working on on, on different stuff you you know it's the right tool for the right task but it's it's a it's a mindset that the teachers have that we want you to learn how to use an encyclopedia today so mm -hmm. you can only use an encyclopedia today you can only use a website today you can only use a database today well, that's you could stupid use, i well, I'm not arguing that, but it's a hard Agreed. battle to fight. You know what There's I mean? There's some like buttons. <laughs> I wish we had one of those. <laughs> That's great. Wouldn't that be, you know what? Popcorn video has that. <laughs> um, Stacy, what do you think? Well, I pour another glass of juice. <laughs> well, no, I think that is a challenge. And I know, I mean, I, I haven't, I was never a librarian in a school, but I've got a 15 year old niece who until probably she got to high school didn't, well, no, they did some work in middle, in, in middle school as well. Um, her school, unfortunately, doesn't have Gale resources, but, oh, no. um, and they use a competitor. I don't understand why, but, um, but in elementary school, it was like pulling teeth to try and get her to do, to use our database. She had to do a report on a country and uh, then find recipes for, uh, for the country. And we have a perfect book for that. It's in Kids Info Bits. We have it as an ebook. But she went to Wikipedia. So it's just, you know, I think we, we struggle with that with that young age. And it was something actually we were talking about with the public librarians as well. Um, it, what they, their thought was is as they get older and their middle school and high school teachers are a little more strict about their sources, that's when they start to see them in the public library more. But it, I think it's definitely a struggle for elementary. And, and I, I know kids' info bits could use improvements along those lines. It's, you know, it, it's very colorful, it's fairly simple, but um, I think there could be just some functionality added and, and content added that would help. Um, one of the things, though, that we have found um, is working well in elementary, again, sorry to kind of keep going back to them, though, are ebooks because uh, one of the things you can do is create your own sub collection. So, the same way that you might put together a book card. Um, with the books you want kids to use for whatever they're researching, you can do that with the ebooks and keep it really simple. Okay, wait, 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 um, so, wait, 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 targeted. wait. Those sub collections are so hard to create. It's two steps. Are you kidding me? When I have for, to add something to for poetry. For the reference library? Yeah. When I have to put my poetry materials together into a literature category, it's, it's about five steps. You, you name it and you pick your books. This is, is I'm, I think we're do, talking about two different things. Oh, okay. But I, whenever I add my books, the new books that I get, it takes me forever to log into a different place in Gale. Um, and then the bot, the commands on the bot, the, the, the screen is not friendly. Um, and every time I do it, I have to call uh, tech support because I can't remember. It's so unintuitive. Okay. So we we, to, we we'll... should talk. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a lot of I have a lot of sub collections. Okay. Just saying. Yeah, I. <laughs> yeah, well, I will have to discuss because yeah, I thought I. You, I I'm well, wondering if it's, it's easier it's always... with the elementary stuff. I don't know. No, it's the same tool. So 
we need to work uh, on. It. Maybe it's just because I'm so familiar with it, 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 it feels simple. So, yeah. um, no, I'd be happy to take a look at it. Because I've, I've, I've said to my student teachers, go ahead and do this. <laughs> and they go, what? <laughs> You get them to. I know. I know. I think the, the like lesson. I, I the know le it certainly can be tedious. Here's the lesson, though. I mean, the lesson is for for my student teachers when I have them do this because I, I don't want that's something I don't want to. I want them to be ready to do, and so they go through this, and and there's no way they can do this without calling tech support, and so it's a lesson in how to call tech support generally, and that you've got to pick up the phone sometimes and <laughs> ask somebody who knows what they're doing, and so basically that that was the goal of the lesson, but you know. Okay. The, it, it's it's the collateral damage from that not being really um, a, a very intuitive interface. Okay. Well, on the training team, we we have a guided tutorial and a handout for doing those. Okay. So um, on our training page, those might be. And might that be doesn't helpful. mean I don't love. Um, I wrote, I, I'm going to work through it because no, I no. love those products <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyway, it's it's it's. it's it's after nine, and I really I want to be respectful of the time that I've taken from um, from the class and and from both of my our very very special guests. So, uh, any final comments or, or questions of our guests before we say good night tonight? This is a very quiet class, huh? Matthew, um, any 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 parting words, yeah. Matthew? Parting words. Um, I'm so glad that you're on Twitter. You should be doing more on there or lurking more or finding more on there. That's wonderful. That's the best. I'm so glad. Um, I've got a bunch of lessons up on my blog at Busy Librarian. Um, that you're free to just get on there and email me if you have questions about it. Or I share stuff all the time. Just email me um, or DM me and I'll get you whatever tools you need. I'd love to. I'll help you out. Oh, and to those of you doing the shelf challenge, yay! Keep using the hashtag shelf challenge. We're so happy that other people are reading. Uh, we challenge, or I challenge, I suppose, um, librarians, public, and, and school to take a section of their shelves in the month of April and read or shelf read every single book on that in that section just to know what's in your collection and know what to weed and know what are gems to promote. And it's so awesome to see that um, there are people doing that. It's very fun to know you're not reading by yourself. Uh, and even better to hear what other people are doing and find other books for us to buy. That's a fun thing. So, yay. Keep doing that, Caitlin. I'm so glad you're doing that. That's beautiful. And, and Matthew, help us promote TLM, TLLM because um, that is a, pro it's a product of, these, of two of the students here, Loran and Caitlin, and, and the rest of the gang oh, yeah. is joining in. I had no so. idea. I couldn't promote it enough. I mean... <gasps> Yay. It's so isolating to be a teacher librarian in elementary school anywhere. It's so isolating, as you know. You're by yourself in the entire building. That's why Twitter became such a big deal to me, so I could not be alone. Um, so finding a hashtag that narrows it down even better is just wonderful. So that's I think thing. you're making Yay. Caitlin cry. <laughs> be the change, Caitlin. Be the change. Be the change. I'm trying. Joyce is a good motivator. I agree. Thank you. Thank I love you all. And Stacy, any parting words from you? Stacy, you still with us? Oh no. No, just you know, thank you all for having me. Um Oh, did I No, you're back now. We see you. Oh. I was worried that we lost you. Now we lost you. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. Stacy. Are you, can you hear us? Uh-oh. This is terrible. Poor Stacy. Okay, so I hope she'll say, oh, that's, thank you for that quick typing, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> what a team we are. <laughs> oh, well, I sure hope I have been able to archive this. I won't know until we hang up. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I Stacey, you. you're back. Okay, parting words, yeah, Stacy. Thank you, Matthew, for letting her know. Take us Sorry, home, guys. Stacey. Can you can hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, I think you froze again. I'm very interested. So, you know, 
please get in touch with questions and feedback yeah, using, as you're using your resources. And again, I'm happy to anybody who'd like to do user testing. I'm not sure how it all works, uh, but I know the person who uh, to get in touch with. So she used to be a trainer, so I have a little in. Um, she's one of our product managers and does an excellent job. So. And so these, these, guys, these guys would love to be testers, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think, that, and that's who we work with. We're always after, you know, School librarian students, um, that was one of the fun things uh, to hear all the feedback from students when we were developing the in-context interface. Mm -hmm. So we um, are very interested in our end users. Very cool. Well, I thought we had a great session tonight. Thank you to both our fabulous guests. Yay. Yay. Sending lots of love to both of you and to <laughs> 5541. And, and keep your fingers crossed about Camtasia really archiving this. I am so... Mm, hopeful. And so, good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night. All right. Thank you again. Appreciate good night. It. All right. Love to Jonah. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good night. Night.